Hello guys, it's Unders. Today I just want to have a little talk about using frequency analyzers in your mixing. I mean, if you're watching my videos, you certainly have watched other videos of other artists where they've got frequency analyzers up and they're referencing those in their mixes and they're using them for certain things. And you've definitely seen me use them within um, FabFilters Pro Q and things like that. I just want to go into a little bit why they can be useful for you, especially when mixing, especially on a master bus. Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple of little details, looking at Fletcher Monson curves and the way we hear to a very, very minor degree, and the way we can use uh, a pink noise slope as a good reference and things like that. So I've got two analyzer options up here. First one's a freebie. Um, if you've got Voxengo or something like that, use that and you can use that as the same reference. What we're going to go over is going to hopefully help you out in your overall mixing process. If these videos are helpful for you, please pop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. It does help me out massively in creating more content for you guys. So first things first, we are going to have a look at the little blue cats one I've got here. And as you can see, I've just captured a bit of a profile of this track, which is a mix down. And you can see there's lots of low end and then it sort of rolls off gently for the low end with sort of a little bump going on in there as it, as it tails off. And generally that is mixing by ear and that's how everything's gonna sound naturally flat to you. Now the reason for that is how your ears hear low frequency versus high frequency sound and how that changes at volume. So if I play this, everything should sound relatively balanced for you. We have a look over here on ozone which is a, a little smaller on the spectrum we can see that it looks relatively flat with a big bump on the low end now i'm just going to explain why that particular audio profile works and why that's what sounds correct. If you want to grab uh, a track that you know is particularly good sounding and try that in your analyzer, you're going to see a very similar sort of profile to what we've got there. Obviously it's gonna vary track for track, but the overall gist of it will be the same. And let me explain why that is. Okay, so if we look at the graph here, this is got frequency across the bottom and decibels up the side. Now we're just going to change that. We're going to have 130 at the top, zero at the bottom, and we're going to take 80 as roughly our middle point. And that's going to be relevant to sound pressure rather than uh, dBFS, which we'd be using when we're recording. Now if we look at how we would hear, we would then be taking lower frequency going right across to the high spectrum we're going to get a curve roughly like this so we need a lot more sound pressure to hear lower frequencies and a lot less around certain points you see sort of around the 1 2k marker we need a lot less pressure and we can hear that really well and then it dips off again and we get a nice high point and then our hearing tends to roll off around the 20 kilohertz depending on age and then generally past that 22 point very very few people are able to ever hear above there so if we're looking obviously here we need a little bit more sound pressure when we're going sort of above the 2k point and then sort of the one to two K area, it's very natural for us to hear at that frequency. Um, things in, in our lives have caused us to develop and be able to hear sounds there that are a little bit quieter. So now if we took the sound pressure down from where, where we're able to hear so much lower, we get a much different response to the low frequency. However, the high frequency sounds that we would hear still have a similar sort of response. So if we look just at the low end here, if we take it down 
even lower to sort of 60 um, decibels. The low frequency almost starts to drop off completely and we're not able to hear that. In a second we'll have a look at a set of Fletcher Monson curves. Now here we've just put in sort of a pink noise threshold and that's going to give us a rough idea that if we mix to that we get everything sort of sitting above this certain point and then around here and then mix it up to that decibel drop off it's going to be within our scope of hearing we're not going to push too hard the bits we hear really easy and we are going to go over slightly on the bits we struggle to hear a little bit more so let's have a look at the Fletcher Munson curves all in a stack and we'll be able to just discern a little bit more about how it really affects the low frequency and why we need to find a good volume and a good balance when we're using a frequency analyzer so here are the Fletcher Munson curves as you can see the way the low frequency changes dramatically when we start dropping below 80 dB in terms of pressure here so we're speaking slightly different terms to how we normally would when we look at recording digital audio and these are the actual profiles so you can see the one that I drew in sort of our middle ground here where we're sloping down and we dip off a bit around here come back for sort of 1 to 2k dip off again around the 5k and then bring it right back up where we're nice and sensitive to that high region and drop off again and it, it boosts up a bit again for the 20k but they haven't been marked particularly on here you can see it on these ones up here where they're at particularly high levels and it's these curves that that, that discern how we hear and they're based on level which is why when you change the level of a mix the the perception of it appears to change if you listen to a track that you've mixed particularly low and the kick drum suddenly seems to disappear this is the reason why so it's part of the reason when you're using the frequency analyzer you need to sort of understand why there's always loads of sub up there because you'll hear people use the terminology like mixing flat that doesn't mean mixing all to a set point on the frequency analyzer. It means mixing to a point where it sounds flat. And you need to understand this before you can really achieve that goal. Okay, so back over to Logic now. And hopefully you've got a bit more of an understanding as to why audio tends to take that particular shape. And that what you can do is use this as a guide to make sure you're not getting lost and you're still able to hit that ballpark there's another little thing we can look at that for some reason has become a crazy popular thing because i think one particular producer talked about it and now everyone's trying it and getting it completely mixed up with the wrong terminology so just for some clarity on this pink noise mixing does not mean listening to pink noise to uh, clear the palate or clear your ears. That, that is something that is dumb, but in this case it's the wrong thing. What we're using here is a pink noise profile, and I think ozone is probably where that idea has come from, so that's what we're gonna grab and use now. If we go into matching EQ on here, you can choose a pink noise profile. Now this is useful because at 1K, pink noise starts to roll off and that is the reason we find pink noise particularly uh, pleasant to listen to unlike white noise which is a constant uh, volume at all frequencies as you can see that curve kind of responds to the Fletcher Munson curves we were listening to or looking at sorry with the exception of there's no huge great big low end so you can use this as a really good reference just to go look I'm in that ballpark and if we go and play my track I think it's going to be a bit high on the top end and there's going to be some low end as well but you'll see it's got roughly that curve I hope cool so we can see that somewhat corresponds to this pink noise dip off with obviously the sub being added in there and that's what people are talking about when they're mixing to this pink noise profile now you also have the 6 dB guide which is very similar you see once we're between the two it just rolls off a little harsher and uh, 
people can use that as well it tends to be for more rock and acoustic style mixes uh, a little bit more natural sounding the pink noise seems to be the way to go for digital musicians I think now you've got a bit of understanding as to why that works and why you're using it hopefully you're going to have a better understanding when you're using your frequency analyzers and uh, people aren't just throwing this terminology out and getting people confused and misconstrued on what what it is that's actually going on this is the method so i don't mix to this i prefer to reference to other tracks that i know are good and just listen and a b try another headphones and that is how i get to where i work that that's what i prefer you might want to mix like this you might find it works for you and it's the way to go i just hope it's been helpful for you guys and i will see you on the next video bye bye now